welcome to discussions of music, healing, and consciousness with your hosts, Chris Noble and Bill Protzman. On this podcast, Chris and I offer a spontaneous, ongoing conversation about how music is intertwined with healing and consciousness. Our first season helped lay the foundation and build some of the superstructure for what we want to do here in season two, where we'll be welcoming some intriguing guests going deeper into ancient mysteries and wisdom, and cultivating your background knowledge and curiosity. We hope these discussions will inspire your own study and practice of the musical and healing arts, and that your contribution to advancing world consciousness will be satisfying for you and transformative to those around you. Let's get started. So I was hosting a music healing meditation workshop, and I mean, even the name of that is probably going to change so much throughout my life because it's uh, an evolving practice. And, you know, it was a really amazing situation. I basically was leading about a 90 minute meditation, guided meditation with my music. And the way that I break it down is essentially the first, let's say, 10 minutes, everyone we sit and as long as it's a small enough group, we can all sort of quickly go around the room and introduce ourselves. And I find just right off the bat, everyone going in and introducing themselves and and, and mentioning what their intention is for the meditation uh, beforehand. Even just a little bit of information coming from everybody in that circle, everyone in that uh, event makes a huge difference on just all of a sudden, I could even feel like some people didn't know each other, a little bit of the awkwardness and you know human social quirks and stuff immediately starts to dissipate after we've all shared a little bit of our intentions for that particular meditation, because even in that, I started to hear common threads from people like, oh, I'm just feeling really run down this week. I've got family visiting. I'm really stressed. You know, um, I just thought this would be a great uh, situation to just kind of float away for a bit, be rejuvenated. And then someone else would say, yeah, I'm also having family visiting this week. And it is really stressful. And I could see them <laughs> lock, eye, lock eyes, laugh connect right and so and so everyone right off the bat they're already connecting yeah they're, you can feel like um and bill you probably experienced this with uh, some of your uh, song circles um sing-alongs that you lead when you know that coherence i want to yeah, i want to use that word coherence i could feel very much feel a tangible coherence as everyone starts to share their story share their intention for this meditation it's building bonds already. It's like um, I can see and feel like the the ties connecting the web of consciousness kind of connecting everybody as they share. So as we become more vulnerable and share uh, our, our truths of what we're going for in that particular day, even as basic as one guy said, um, honestly, my lower back's really sore. I've been snowshoeing all day. And I just really wanted to hear some nice music and, and, and zone out. And as simple as that is, uh, someone else was uh, asked him about snowshoeing. And then he started to go into like, yeah, I just find it's my, my form of meditation. I just love to go for walks and I find it very meditative. And then some other people were started to chime in and be like, you know, I've always thought gardening was kind of very meditative. And, and, it, and then so you can, and I'm just letting everyone kind of just talk. And, and I can see them unraveling what meditation is for them because meditation yeah. isn't just what we think it is, right? So it's like, I haven't even started playing music yet and everyone is already in a state of coherence and connection. And I don't know, Bill, a, a question for you is, have we lost a bit of that in our current day and age? Because this was the simplest thing ever. I mean, all I'm doing is sitting in a room and, and I do have everyone's attention and they've paid to be there. So there's also like a, a material incentive and like, okay, I find when people pay to go to things, they're going to pay more, usually more attention. There's usually a psychological just thing that goes with that. So they're there, they, their attention is there. And then they start to share little things. And all of a sudden they're already in a really interesting state. Have you like, why isn't that more common? Like, you know what I mean though? Like, I feel like little things like that, have we, have we lost even just, and I'll tell you about the rest of this this workshop in a bit, but I just even not touching on this fact that everyone beforehand was connecting on this micro little level. And even that was so elevating. Do we not do that enough in our day to day? I, I don't think we do it anywhere near enough, man. Uh, 
I know that there are intentional places where that's supposed to happen, like in recovery groups, a group meeting, or um, what they used to call rap groups, where combat veterans would get together and they'd tell war stories, right? So this works. This is a this is an incredible form of of coming to presence, of offering vulnerability. Um, I know in Christian megachurches, they have small groups where this is supposed to happen. And I've participated in some of those. I've been part of book studies, but really just getting down to who we are, you know, the basics of let's, let's sit around the campfire, you know, <laughs> and, and maybe, you know, everybody around the campfire has 45 ways that they're all different from each other, but just that common intention, you know, just offering that intention the way you do, Chris, it's like, you know, come to the whatever we're going to call it, <laughs> yeah. come sit around Chris Noble's campfire and offer your intention so that, that just giving people a place to sort of unpack a little bit, I think is the thing that's missing. And we need to, we all need to. And somehow in the presence of other people, it's better, you know? 100%. I even, um, in this sharing circle before we even started, I mentioned, I gave myself an example. Like I used myself in the beginning just to show like, Hey, you guys can share as much as you want. You can share as simple as I'm here today to relax. Cool. Great. Sure. Yeah. That's enough. That's fine. Cause I don't want people. There's some times where I, and I've been in this state myself where I really want to stay inward at a meditation and I'm really just there. Honestly, I'm there for me. I really am. And I need it. And maybe I'm going through a rough time and I just don't really want to talk about it. And that's totally cool too. So Wait, I recommend the, let's be honest. We're all there for, for, for us, for us. Right. I'm also very true. Me. And yeah. Yep. You know, there's a, there's a, I think more than ever before, there's a need in the world to just let that happen. And I've even been saying, you know, I do this, I'll, I'll be sit, fr sit in front of a group and I'll say, you know, I do this work really for selfish reasons, because I need this experience of connecting with you in order to feel like it's okay. Mm. You know, and, and that can be an opener too, because I've had more than once. Somebody will say, you know, Bill, I thank you for saying that because I feel the same way. And then yet I'm always wondering if, you know, if there's some agenda or I have to be here to you know, do something for somebody else in the room or, and that happens organically. Like it already happens as you're telling about your group, you know, people are organically finding, mirroring, I guess, one another's um, intention. It's kind of a funky word to use, but mirroring one another's presence in the room and intention. I think that's a great word because that's what yeah. we were setting beforehand. And that's so, so important. Uh, intention settings kind of everything to be honest. And so it was really funny. And then I shared um, a really weird dream I had that that's that same day. And it, it was a really weird dream. And it really sent me into a, it's one of those dreams that lingers with you during the day. And it, it, it just, it, it knocked me off kilter. It was, I was off all day basically. And I, I just shared that. Um, and then I asked at the end, I was like, actually, has anyone else had some weird dreams? Everyone in the room raised their hand. Everyone that same night in particular, it was just after the full moon. Um, and some listening might roll their eyes at that. But uh, there are some really interesting phenomena that happen with full moons. Sure. And yep. um, and I mean, just on a statistical level, crime always spikes on a full moon, which is interesting. And there's a lot of those astrological reasons and uh, things that go on during a full moon. Anyway, uh, dreams are apparently one of them. And I was having some really crazy ones. And apparently everyone else in that room also had experienced that. So when everyone raises their hand, when I asked a very obscure, weird question about dreams and and everyone raised their hand, I knew in that moment too, for myself, like you said as well, I'm like, wow, this is just as much therapeutic for me as it is anyone else in this room. If anything, I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm getting the most out of this, uh, this situation because even just before once again we hadn't even started yet and here we were synchronizing becoming coherent becoming vulnerable sharing our thoughts and then connecting on all these different realms that i don't think anyone myself included showing up there was ever gonna think we would connect on at a at a meditation you know? it's like the old movies where it's like so, synchronize your watches right everybody's <laughs> on the yeah. same the same time frame but you can't just leave it hanging there can you tell us what your dream was about so I had uh, a very weird dream about uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine and in a weird a weird environment. So the scenario, I can't quite recall anymore the specifics of the scenario, 
I, what I really remember more than anything is that it, the feelings of the dream, uh, mm -hmm. the feelings of the dream more than anything. And it was one of those things where I woke up where, one where I woke up really not knowing what reality I was in. I was in some other world with my, with my previous partner and I don't know what world that was. <laughs> we were, I don't think we were even together. We weren't dating anymore, but we had a very intense uh, interaction, very emotional. Yeah. And we're in some other freaking dimension, some other realm. And I just remember waking up being very sad, also being like feeling a lot of guilt and then anger and then also like, like anger and, and confusion, a lot of really challenging emotions, I would say. But then most of all confusion because I didn't even know what what planet I was on when I woke up. And it was one of those dreams where I had to really tell myself, like, you are here, you're alive, you're on planet Earth, you know, like you're in this dimension, Chris, like you have this and this and that going on today. Like, come on. So it was not a, the you know, not, not in terms of the content itself. I can't really quite remember the details, but it was one of those ones that just afterwards it was uh it was like um almost like this stickiness that just like a residue that was on my body the rest of the day. And to be honest, I didn't really uh, get it off of my self until the meditation later that evening. And with everybody there after the meditation, I was like a new person. I basically had like, uh, I was like reborn again after that and felt a completely new bit of energy, light, light, light as a feather. I could just feel like I could float home um, what a difference to have started and had a very full day of a lot of emotions. It was a challenging day. Like I had so many emotions coming up. I could barely do my work. Uh, I was really, really, really consumed by it. And then meditation happens. No problem. I feel like we've skipped all the middle here. So um, the, the group comes together and people start sharing before anything, before you actually start the process. People are sharing, they connect, they kind of synchronize. Yeah. And, and then what happens? So then I start playing a little bit of music, very light, soft, quiet, a little bit of my synthesizer tuned down to 432 hertz concert pitch. And um, and this is going to be interesting, Bill, because we're going to go into an area too where I'm starting to see as much as it is important, I think, to at least consider the tuning of your instruments like 432 hertz, which resonates with me personally. It also shows that there's so much more than just one frequency that makes all the difference. There's going to be a lot of things that go into it. And so I started, I kind of give a, um, like a 10 minute, five to 10 minute overview on what sound healing even is, right? Yeah. A lot yeah. of stuff that, all the stuff that we talk about on the show here. So I go over all that, explain what 432 hertz even is, the significance, why we use it, et cetera. And then after that, I, uh, I encourage everyone to lie down and find a space where they can. So they kind of disperse out of the sort of, sort of sharing circle that we have. And then they find their space in the room and then kind of lie down or sit in a very comfortable position. And then I start and then I, and I basically led them after once they got comfortable, I led them through the music meditation portion, which is a lot of um, I start off with the body scan. I get everyone to focus in a lot of their body and I, I can as I'm watching and looking out at everybody, I can actually see, and maybe it's that I'm having uh, my other senses are more activated more and more these days because I feel like I'm sensing and seeing energy more clearly these days. And I can sort of sense and feel everyone relaxing more when I do a body scan. So body scan is really helpful because, and anyone listening or watching or listening um, certainly can try the most basic of a body scans, because you just think about different parts of your body. Well, my forehead, my eyes, my nose, my lips, my mouth, my tongue, my, my neck, and you just keep going down your body and you focus some energy on those places and, and try to maybe relax those areas. Because once you consciously put thought and intention onto these different parts of your body, you feel so much more relaxation coming in uh, into your being and into yourself. You can feel your body starting to melt into the ground. And it's our, it's also telling your body that you are in a parasympathetic state, meaning that you're safe. Yes. Meaning yes. that you're in a good place, be able to drop into a real deep, deep state, like a, a delta or a, well, a theta or an alpha, probably um, brainwave state. So that's very important too. Um, have you had a, on a side note, have you like, when you, do you do body scans often, Bill, or do you, have yeah, you like ha from, well, let's see, did I do them before? I think when I started to learn yoga in the nineties, 
the last thing that our teacher did was put us through Javasana. So we're lying flat on our back, uh, arms relaxed, palms facing up, legs slightly apart, feet relaxed. And I'm sure if you're listening to this, you've been through one of these before. They did it with light. So you have you pictured the light entering either your head, and but they usually started with the feet, and this white light sort of gradually filling your body. And the guidance is to feel it, feel it filling your feet, then up your into your knees, then up your legs, into your hips, you know, and one by one through all of the various body parts until it finally like expand extends out through your crown. And um, I got what was going on. But the discipline of learning it and repeating it sort of got into me. So I find myself now doing the same kind of thing, uh, even without the yoga practice, of just coming to presence that way of, you know, sitting, I mean, I'm sitting at the piano, put my feet on the floor and I can feel the, the whole thing. And it doesn't take a long time. You can just sort of feel this wave come through you and all of a sudden you're at full presence again and activate it in a way that... Well, it's not activated. It's more like neutral, you know, Chris. You just feel like, oh yeah, there's the there's the energy now, and you're ready and balanced and ready for what happened. What what's going to come next? Do you find it's um it also really helps reduce aspects of anxiety? And I'll say the reason I ask that is because one of the things I notice for myself in particular is I do all, same as you. I do body scans every day, all the all the time. I don't even think about them now. They're so right. It's habitual. just cool. Second nature. It's like meditation for me. It's, I, I look at meditation just as uh, brushing my teeth. It's just as basic. It's literally mental, emotional, spiritual hygiene uh, for me these days. And uh, so with body scans, you know, I'll do that throughout the day. And one of the ones I always try to do is my shoulders and my jaw. Oh, right. Because yeah. we, we store so much ten tension there. So all I need to do is even just think about my jaw. And I'll notice that I'm clenching it. And then I'll stop. And then even just that moment of a body scan has done a, a lot because i'll be like oh my god well, it's probably clenched jaw for like the last half hour yep let's undo yep. that mm. oh wow oh yeah that feels much better okay wow and and then you're, you're going from there so these are small but very 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 significant things that we can do every day anytime throughout the day that have a huge impact uh, long term certainly i suspect so this is, is just one little technique we, you know, as musicians, we like to find techniques and practice them. So our sort of, our, our mindset, if you will, going in is, oh, this body scan thing is cool. I can practice this. And so we do, and it becomes second nature. I think for, for us, and maybe for athletes, I don't know, uh, much more quickly than the average bear, who may be doing a body scan for the first time, or maybe for the first or second time in six months. So it's not hard. I mean, people, this is easy to do, right? It's not like it's complicated, but if you develop the habit, I'll use that word, uh, other people might refer to it if you develop the practice, then it's instantly available whenever you need it. You can just grab your toolkit and, oh yeah, like you're saying, Chris, oh man, I can feel my jaw clench. Oh, now it's not. And those little moments of awareness throughout the day are really precious because they reconnect you with who you really are by disconnecting you from the stress of who you're not. That's so well said. That's so well said. Yeah. That's, that's, it's literally, it's bringing you into presence. Yeah. Come to presence, but, right? That's it. And then when you do, you can relax. <laughs> yeah. Or, or choose. Uh, I don't use body scans to intervene with anxiety. Anxiety is, is more active for me. So I've got to do something physical, like breathe, uh, or some mind game, you know, I have to actually engage with anxiety instead of like letting it go. It'll go. But my practice on anxiety is anxiety is really close to excitement, like on the spectrum of emotions. And if I can choose, I'd rather choose excitement. So I have to take action to get myself back to choosing, you know, it's not like trying to overcome anxiety. It, it's like, oh, I have a choice here. I can experience this feeling that is feeling like anxiety, or I can experience the same feeling as excitement. And when I get my head around that, it changes for me. But it's more active, you know, like than just 
like a mental to... gymnastics in a bit or yeah it, i mean it's a little bit but you know the feelings come from the heart it's like i can feel my heart racing and all of that it's like oh well, i'd rather feel like i was getting onto a roller coaster than <laughs> <laughs> much more fun much more fun than jumping off a cliff right uh, so that little change of awareness if you will which i feel like is is a heart thing rather than a head thing mm -hmm. like i'm here's all this here's all this energy coming at me and it's like oh it feels bad it feels bad it feels anxious and that's an interpretation of the energy energy is just energy yeah so if i get my programming i guess out of the way and say, oh, this is energy. It's coming at me. I wonder what it's all about. Hey, this this could be useful energy. You know, I've got things I got to do. I'm feeling good about this stuff. Instead of, oh my God, I've got these things I've got to do. I'm worried about this stuff. You know the difference, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, that's kind of like how you accept that energy is below the neck, right? Heart and gut, maybe? Yeah, yeah. And I guess the rest of your body, because it's all... Oh, the sensing. brain will come along. Head brain will come along. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So we got to reprogram that sucker, you know, so it doesn't say, oh, that energy feels anxious to us. It kind of reprogram it. That energy feels good to us. That's, that's, that's positive, you know, power. We can use that stuff. You just mentioned the brain there, and it, it's a, this is a total tangent here, but I watched uh, the other night, rewatched um, the original Doctor Strange uh, Marvel movie with a buddy of mine who hadn't seen it before, and I, because I told him... This is a great film to watch uh, for a lot of different reasons. One, it's kind of like an amazing uh, pop cult, pop, pop entertainment blockbuster version of the spiritual awakening um, process. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing film. Basically, if you look at it from that, like a, a story about the spiritual awakening process, but then also it's a, it's a story about, you know, quantum physics. It's a story about the multidimensionality of life and there's so many lines in that film that I just adore. And one of them, and I won't remember this exactly, but the, um, what's her name? The, uh, the ancient one, as they call her in the film, she's the, um, the, the main boss amongst the good, the good guys, Dr. Strange, um, uh, basically guru. And yeah. she, he comes in as a world renowned scientist doctor, right? And it's all left brain, left brain, left brain, left brain, extremely intelligent. And, but, you know, very arrogant too. And uh, she says to him, she's like, your intellect has got you this far in your life, but for you to move forward and to learn the, the mystic arts, to learn this magic, these powers that I've shown you, you're going to have to forget everything you know <laughs> and start off fresh. Everything you thought you knew, you have to forget it, even though you were a world renowned doctor and scientist and are literally your whole life is based on you knowing all these things. None of it's going to serve you here. Get that left brain out of here. And uh, once you can do that, then you can start to progress down this path of, of mysticism and all that kind of stuff. And I just love that because it's so true, right? It's this brain is a great thing, but it is so misused, I would say. And it's also over um, glamorized and certainly uh, over promoted as the only source of uh, thought and intelligence and information, or um, as we know, the heart, the gut, and probably many other glands and parts of our body have uh, a source of intelligence that we can and should be tapping into. And that's probably going to alleviate a hell of a lot of stress and anxiety because I think half the way we stress ourselves out so much is is overthinking, overcomplicating, letting our brain just become that that rat running in the, the hamster wheel, which I guess is more like a hamster running in the hamster wheel. But yeah, it's uh it's 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 fascinating. So <laughs> well a hamster has a purpose. <laughs> also true. <laughs> brain doesn't. <laughs> well in that it case, relies yeah. on you know the rest of the body to give it purpose. <laughs> It's so true. And and it's funny, you think about the brain, all the brain's doing, the brain doesn't have eyes, ears, like it's taking all the signals from your eyes, from your nose, from your sensory perception, parts of your skin and stuff, or all these, these senses that we have are on the external. And then they're sending information to our brain. So our brain's just interpreting what it's getting. So it's, it's all in the dark, our, our poor brain, you know, just kind of making 
making up the best of what it can with reality. And I'm sure it's not given us nearly as much as we're probably receiving from this existence. There's no, so. there's no mistaking the paradox of putting the pineal gland in the middle of the brain. Yeah. Right? Like the spiritual source of everything in many traditions is not the brain. It's this little tiny gland that's, you know, surrounded by the tiny, like cerebellum. Like tiny. I think if I, I got my it's brain anatomy correct. Well, it's definitely somewhere in there. And it's so cool because when you look at that part of the brain um, with the pineal gland surrounded by the other things that I can't remember because I'm not a neuroscientist or I'm not Bill Protzman. Yeah, and, I'm not either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is and, just uh, an effigy you see in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so cool. So I've seen these diagrams where they if they cut the brain in half and you look at it from the side angle where the pineal gland is, it, it looks exactly like the uh, like Horus's eye, like the um, the all seeing eye in ancient Egypt, which is a really cool, like exactly the same. So there's obviously something going on there, but I digress. That was a huge tangent. No, no, no. It's a, a useful tangent. Um, I, I love it. There's in this practice, just so, so you've described it so far, there's so much. I mean, you used to have to go and pay a lot of money to unpack your stuff with somebody guiding your intention, right? And look at where we are now. We just do this. We just show up and do it. Yeah, no. And, and we, we add in. The, yeah, we add it. We move on to the interesting stuff, like the really cool stuff, which is the sound healing stuff that you're getting to. I know you're getting to it. <laughs> it's fine. No, but I, I, for me personally, like I thought the real magical stuff was all the stuff in a way leading up to it. And that happened, excuse know, me, right? after, after, after it. It's like the meditation itself is beautiful, but it's very much a, an individual journey. So, you know, once I led people from after the body scan, and then into the meditation, they all found their little place and they got comfortable. That is more of a blur for myself and for everybody, because we all kind of go into another dimension at that point. So right. I'm, I'm improvising music, which means I'm already off in right brain land. And uh, I'm, I'm literally in a, I'm in a form of my own meditation. And so I would do, I do that for like half an hour, 45 minutes. And as I, I start to talk at the beginning of it, usually, and I, I take everything that everyone said in that moment in that sharing circle, and then I bring it into the meditation. So that's a really important thing too, about the sharing circle is that you get like, I've never, and I don't think I ever will ever plan one of these events. I plan the basic structure of it, but in terms of what I say and the specifics of the music always is made up on the spot because of the very reason that I don't know why everyone's there. I don't know what's needed in that moment until I'm there. And then yes. once I'm there, and people share and talk to me ahead of time, like they did. I'm like, great. So then I could, I guided them through a meditation that, that played into what we were talking about and what we discussed. And afterwards I'm coming out of it. They're coming out of it. And we, you know, we, we really slowly, slowly, slowly come out of it because people go really deep, you know, as we've said on many other episodes, oh my God, music and meditation are really amazing when they work together because you can go and I wasn't even using binaural beats or anything, but people went so deep that I uh, I actually sang a song at the end of it just to inject some energy in the room because I knew a lot of people had to drive home. Yeah, <laughs> and right. That was actually a little part of me was so a little worried that they were going to be so zenned out, so relaxed that they might have some issues getting back uh, back to their home. So I sang a song. I could feel just this need to. I just. Um, and I sang something like I have a Beatles medley that I, I do where I mash up like uh, three or four Beatles songs together. So it's just things that people know and are recognizable yeah. and uplifting. And then we just, uh, I sang that at the end. Some people joined me. Most were too like still out of it. And that helped in inject some energy back into the room um, to, to help them kind of come to. And then we did another share at the end. And what people experienced then was was unreal. And the thing, and I, and I would love, and I'll I'll let you know what some people shared in a sec. But I would love to get your opinion, Bill. Is for me personally, it's so interesting when people in the same room experiencing the same meditation. I have found that every single person has the most individual experience. There's not anyone that is going to have the exact same experience as somebody else. That's always always different. Have you have you experienced that? Yeah, it's always different. Music is so cool because it's instantly customizable without us having to do anything, you know, except to offer it. 
And <laughs> if, if as a listener, you can go to that place where the music takes over, uh, your journey is going to be exactly the journey you need, right? Uh, I'm sounding a lot like a psychedelic guide here, but that's on purpose because anything that suspends the default network, the term of the art now in neuroscience, that is the way that your pattern matcher, your head brain actually does everything regularly. If you can suspend that for long enough, you're going to get the experience that you need the subconscious or whatever will take over like some other thing not the head brain will take over and guide you through the process and um so our job as musicians is kind of put you in that place and are, are you telling me that in a way we heal ourselves better when we're not thinking <laughs> we always heal ourselves better when we're not thinking <laughs> so we just gotta stop thinking man <laughs> well, no, that's kind of being flipped because I know there are lots of, um, you know, power of positive consciousness kind of people out there. And my own religious tradition is one where it's all about what you think that creates the openness to healing. So um, it's but, both. I think it's like, it's not at yeah. all that. And it is, all, I, I know what you mean. I, mean, I was half joking with that, of course. I know, but, me too. <laughs> but, but because it's kind of a paradox, you're absolutely right. Mind over matter is everything your thoughts shape your reality a thousand percent we know that through quantum mechanics and from just life experience um and yet i would say at the same time so much of the incredible healing or meditation or spiritual experiences i've i've ever had have always come from when that left brain is off it is off yep and i am in a flow state i am in an open state i'm in maybe a no thought state which is not easy in this day and age to be a place where you're not thinking about anything yeah uh that is that is an incredible place to be to be able to receive these amazing uh, experiences and then at the same time thinking is also very powerful so i think it's a balance of course like when it comes back to anything balance the time which is when I, when I meditate, I try to get rid of most of my thoughts. I try to take it as a time to not think. Sometimes though, if I'm doing a specific meditation, it's to repeat affirmations. So I am thinking kind of about something. Right, right. Uh, maybe, you know, so it's it's all depending on what you're going for, I think. The purists are about, oh, well, if you're hearing anything or seeing anything or whatever, then it's not meditation because you haven't emptied your mind. But yeah. I like to think of it as a sort of a teeter-totter and... um you know, our job is, is to hold the fulc fulcrum of that thing, like the music, the musician, the guide, whatever is the thing on which the, the balance mm. beam is resting. And as long as you tilt Ooh, it, I like that, you know, more toward, um, I don't want to say more away from, but if you're tilting more toward no thought, you're tilting away from thought, right? If you're tilting toward silence, you're tilting away from sound. Uh, so there's this, a kind of an arbitrary uh, imposed thing that says, oh no, if you're thinking, you're not meditating. Uh, I don't think that's true because you and I both know playing music, yes, you have to get a certain amount of your thought out of the way, but there is still some thought required. There's still some direction. You still have to steer the ship, you know, but you don't have to stress over it because of the uh, practice, you know? A hundred percent, Bill. I, that's what I experienced when I was, when I'm leading these meditations, I'm playing music I'm singing. Uh, I'm very much having to take uh, into consideration my um, my audio levels, um, things like that. There's there's thinking. There's definitely thinking. Yeah, yeah. And and time flies by. I go into a whole other universe. I'm still having a meditative experience, and yet I still am consciously aware and using my left brain to some degree. So you're absolutely right. We can find. Um, we can find a balance and we can also go on extremes when we feel we need to. Sometimes you really want and need an experience with no thought. That's the goal. Go for it. And then yeah. sometimes you'll have a really busy meditation, but it's helpful because you actually come to conclusions or new thoughts formulate and you come to a really important idea or a conclusion and that needed to happen. So the, um, it just depends. Maybe the best way of describing it is that the one end of the one of the balance beam is thought and the other end is consciousness. And the, the less consciousness you have, the more thought you have and vice versa. So if you can dial down your thought, you also consequently you dial up consciousness and that consciousness might seem like thoughts or awareness or some other thing, but it's not the same as 
the run of the mill yeah left brain grinding it out processor thinking about everything all the time you know that monkey mind the monkey mind yeah. yeah yeah so and and that makes sense yeah. because you can operate you know heavy equipment in that space quite safely keyboard sound design panel singing providing guidance in the room um can all be done very effectively even though you yourself are in that space which again sounds like a psychedelic guide that does small dose psych that psychedelics to be able to be in the same space while guiding other people who may be at a higher level of, of you know, lower level, a different level of awareness and consciousness through that process. It's a really cool balance to find, I think. Um, I, I, I remember, you know, when it's happened to me on stage, it's really incredible when it happens. Not all the time. And I wish it was, but when it does come in, it's just like, oh my gosh, I remember that night, right? I remember how that was. And this is what this 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 particular workshop too was was really special because that's exactly what it felt like in the moment and after the moment, you know, like because when we were sharing after, a lot of people, you know, uh, at least half the people there were were brought to tears at a certain point, which is always right, yeah you know, it's always beautiful. It's always wonderful to hear. And if it, yeah, if it doesn't happen, that's fine too. It doesn't need to be there, but it's all, it is a, a very tangible sign that people were moved. People went somewhere in that meditation that had an impact clearly. Yes. Um, other people, profound rest, just profound rest, which I think in this day and age, uh, anyone can agree. I'm sure that having a really restful experience is not that common these days. And to feel rested, to feel like truly like, whoa, I feel like really rejuvenated and rested right now. I'm going to say that it, 40 huge. hertz again, that 40 hertz rest, <laughs> you know, it's so beautiful. I mean, if you're listening to this right now, it, it is so beautiful. It's unlike any other kind of rest I had on 40 hertz. It is so, different with the frequency, yeah. right? It's, it's yeah. different than when I, a deep sleep. Yeah. It's different than when I do a yoga nidra kind of nap for 10, 15 minutes. Uh even the binaural beat power nap, yeah, is a different quality. It's than different. That Forty hertz, and and this is probably different for everybody. But the 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 invitation here is to find your rest. You know, whatever it is. You know, um, did you make a recording? I did. Um, it's supposed to be on my Patreon. I just got to get it off my phone somehow. It's being a little cool. So people who are there, now. right, could go back in, uh, on that recording, and theoretically achieve the same level of rest. Yep. If they just follow along like they did now, again, we're going to have to, um, it's, it's always that interesting thing in person versus not in person. Is there a dynamic that we're, that we're not aware of going on there? Probably when it comes yeah. to music, probably, but can you get 90% there? Probably also, you know, by listening to the recording I'm saying, uh, afterwards. Oh, right. but so, you know, the, the, the pattern matcher will remember what it did. You're, so you you're right. Rely if on they that. were actually there, you're right. You know, and then yes. you can, remember the rest of your holistic engagement, heart and gut engagement as well, uh, will, will flow along with that because it's all in there. Subconscious stores everything. So it's true. a little bit of a uh, tug on the pattern matcher will tug you far enough that with some practice, you could get the whole effect, you know, after a few tries. That's a good point, Bill. There's a certain recordings I'll go to on, on YouTube for right, yes. um, particular uh, breath works or uh, that 40 whatever. Hertz recording that I keep mentioning. Yeah, this guy, I don't know, some Chris Noble <laughs> some dude. Person. I don't know. <laughs> and and but the thing is, is uh, so I'll use an example. There's a breath work I love um, on, on my favorite YouTube, uh, um, my favorite YouTube yoga channel, Breath and Flow uh, Yoga, and they do a great breath work um for about 20 minutes and it's and it's just the way it flows and then the meditation afterwards and the music all in it just the way they've they've crafted it all together almost always brings me to tears every yeah. single time and now it's i've been doing this for since the beginning of the pandemic so it's now you know three odd years now since the, i've started doing this particular breath work and now when i go back to it like a song much like a piece of music I am more or less taken to some of those first times when I was doing this breath work and I was going through a lot. I was going through like a breakup and moving from my hometown and all these things, moving, shifting, changing. I was very emotional. I can feel some of that in the recording of the breath work modality that I'm now doing three years later. And it's, it's cool because I still want to use it. 
and I still have a different experience each time, but there's a, there's remnants of it that, yeah. you know, I don't know what the science exactly would be there, but it's, it's interesting because I, I can feel sometimes the, the frog in my throat or that, that feeling of, of about to cry. And, and, and some regards, I'm like, yeah, it's probably something I need to do. And other regards, I'm like, am I just, is this like a muscle response or a cognitive response like Pavlov's dogs or something here like what am I you know what I mean <laughs> well the it's answer really is funny. yes to both right yeah exactly yeah <laughs> I I am always surprised by the way those experiences will come back to me mm. you know when you at least expect them of course which is usually when you wish they wouldn't <laughs> yeah that's how life likes to work well, I'm leading right? a bunch of people here through this meditation with music that I'm improvising and singing at the same time and all this stuff that I have to control and this sure. yeah <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> but you know, it's like that tap on the shoulder. It's like, no, this is this is what's important. All that other stuff doesn't matter, right? The, the moment that you feel like you can't hold it together and the tears come. That's beautiful. That's it's the moment. Needed. Yeah. Right. That's the moment. And people get it. So so this is happening. People and and you know, the, the music has happened and you have to kind of wake people up with some songs that bring them back. more energy. Mm -hmm. So when the music is over, then what happens? Well, it's basically over at that point. We spend the next 10 to 15 minutes um, just doing kind of like Q&A, but sharing as well. So yeah. I, start off, I start, start off a bit with just like closing kind of sharing. So once again, go around the room, get a pulse on what everyone's feeling. If they want to share, no pressure. Right. And um, some some practitioners really like, it's all about the sharing. And I'm like, I agree, but I don't want to make people feel pressure because yeah. I'd rather them just have their own individual experience and that be whatever it's meant to be for them. Anyway, um, so we share. We do a lot of that. The sharing was phenomenal. That was like the icing on the cake for me personally, because like I said, I heard um, really profound experiences from people, some having like um, uh, actual interactions in their in their ethos, in their mind, mind's eye with uh, loved ones that had either passed recently or were still around, but had like really incredible astral conversations or you know what i mean like um meditative conversations in these meditate or just conversations with loved ones basically was an interesting um thing that came up for a couple of people and then um some others experienced physically like one the guy that was complaining about his back a bit from snowshoeing he's like wow back feels great <laughs> Perfect. It's like now I can go go again uh, walking tomorrow. Thanks, Chris. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's like a so it's so interesting the massive array of outcomes that the same meditation can have for different people, and I think that's one of my favorite things is just how, like you said, music is infinitely customizable, and it can be the same song and it can mean a million different things to a million different people. And that was one of my major takeaways from that was um, sure. was that, and also, oh man, I like I felt a little guilty at the end because uh, not really, but in a joking way, where I just felt like I was the one that got all the healing. You know, I uh, I felt feeling unbelievably uplifted. The people in that room, like, and I told this to them, like, we, like, you guys are paying me, and I'm here as the practitioner. I get that, but not for one second would I ever say that this is not a co-creation. This is absolutely a co-creation. We all in our energies and our frequencies created and manifested this situation, which sounds really hippy dippy, but it's absolutely true. Our frequencies all merged together in this room and this space. And we've all now, especially from sharing stories and, and our, and, and what we went through, like at the end the energy in that room, a bunch of strangers all kind of felt like family at the end where it, it was a beautiful group and it just such a coherence. I'm going to keep using that word coherence was, uh, it was just absolutely magical. And imagine if we were living in a world where this was just the most commonplace thing to do on a Thursday afternoon, Sunday, whatever day. And I know this is where a lot of religious traditions come from. Uh, because there's real validity in a lot of them where you're just getting together with people sharing some wisdom, maybe some ancient wisdom, discussing what you went through that week, what you're moving through in your life. Sing about it at the end, have a choir, right? Big choir or whatever. Uh, you can start to see the sense, you know, I think religion in a lot of ways, certainly for me growing up atheist, you know, you, you, and there's a lot of reasons to look 
down upon religion and think it's a load of uh, propaganda and, and, you know, manipulativeness and evil and all that kind of stuff. And you're like, well, it's like anything in life. There's yes and no. And yes and no. Like it's, it's got all those things. And yet at the same time, you look at the, like some of the traditions and they make so much sense to me now, you know, why wouldn't you want to meet every week in a beautiful place with a bunch of your neighbors and friends and loved ones and share and talk and then sing, you know, incorporate music. So in a, in a more different new agey modern day way, I feel like I was in a sense, just tapping into what we've done on such a large scale as a civilization throughout millennia, thousands of years, I think we've been doing this. So those are kind of my, that was my experience basically. Thank you all for listening to, uh, to that. <laughs> it's profound, profoundly simple. My um, my sort of clinical mind, which only happens because I've spent way too much time with clinicians in the last 20 or 30 years, sees the utter simplicity of what you offer, Chris, and the, the incredible power, because it's not about protocol, it's not about therapy, it's not even about understanding your clients or your patients or any of the other stuff that we would look at as markers is sort of a psychological therapeutic interaction and it's not like spooky healing either you're you're not the healer you're offering a modality in which healing can happen and yeah. and you do it really well i mean judging from results right people express their relief the guy who felt his back had unwound it's just like all these other things that are the body's natural response. And I, by the body, maybe I mean the holistic body, head, heart, gut, like the entire, the spiritual body's response to an invitation to come into the room um, brings with it all of the stuff that takes care of all of the symptoms, you know, why we were there and broken in the first place. And, and you know, why not do more of that? I mean, if you're listening to this, put on some music, right? Give yourself a healing experience. Find a guided meditation or, you know, Use that 40 hertz thing that I keep referring to. <laughs> but it, it's it's not hard. It just requires you to re say to say yes to something different. And just remember you're you're the one healing yourself. As crazy as that yeah. sounds, you know, like all these modalities are really in a way getting some of the time it's mostly just a, a way to get yourself out of your own way. Yeah, you gotta get out so of your own meditation. Way. Yeah. Meditation is just a technique where we allow our ego and our, our that left brain just like we're trying to get that part of ourselves out of the way to allow the rest of ourselves to see what's going on and actually heal that right and uh, yeah I think that's a lot of the time what it's doing so listen listeners you know our audience um, take that into consideration you know you are the best healing modality you could ever have and see which one specific modality is the thing that allows you to heal yourself in that sense? What, what, what resonates with you? Maybe it's not music. Maybe you're into painting, you know, sure. dance. I have a couple of friends that have their form of meditation is dance without a doubt. And it is unbelievably healing and incredible. I mean, the list goes on and on it. Find your favorite fun modality. Fun is important too. enjoy. You want to enjoy this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So there's lots to discover and uh, we're really happy to showcase some of these modalities on this show here. And I think we're going to be doing a lot more of that. You know, we want to have more people on the show that can share their different modalities and techniques, uh, not only just to heal, but just how to expand awareness and how to um, add to your life in all these different ways. So for those uh, listening, watching, you know, stay tuned for, I guess, what are we calling it, Bill? Season two Season coming up. Season two, yes. Full motion video and a bunch of other interesting <laughs> technological advances we didn't have, you know, back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> or chose not to use. <laughs> or chose not to use, just for sheer simplicity. Yeah. Chris, well, this, this is such a beautiful story. I am um, really grateful that you were able to offer that to us. Um, you know, names have been changed to protect the uh, protect the healed. Actually, we didn't we didn't mention any names at all, except for yeah, us. I usually don't. Yeah, yeah, which is totally fine. Um, and you know, I would love to be able to invite people to connect with you on this. 
Although I know you're headed for Greece, so maybe you'll be able to, you know, do some spontaneous healing circles from the uh, from the Aegean. Yeah, that would be really cool. I mean, a lot of the the uh, stuff I like to do is in person usually, but uh, I've got a um, a conference coming up in March that I will be doing a um, an interesting online version of what I just described to everybody. So I will have a piece, maybe like my forty hertz piece on YouTube, playing in the background, and then I'll just speak over top of it. Mm -hmm. So I won't be performing live. That is the main difference. Uh, having done that in the past, and I've learned, you know, a lot about that. Not still not my. I just don't enjoy doing it on Zoom. Maybe five, ten years when Wi-Fi gets faster, I'll be more into it. But um, I want to develop something that can work for the online. So I'm going to try that out in March and uh, future episodes. Stay tuned, folks, because maybe I'll have something far more available for online. Meaning anyone, anytime in the world, can connect with me on that and. Maybe we can collaborate on something. In the meantime, check out my YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, that's about the the best I can do right now for, for that. But yeah, stay tuned to future episodes where I might bring back some wisdom from ancient Greece uh, that Bill and myself can digest. And, uh, you know, maybe the ancients, uh, some really interesting things. One, th one place I might be going to is uh, Malta. And Malta has a really peculiar cave system it's a unesco world heritage site it's the oldest cave temple in the world and oh, this is so cool you gotta check this out listen to this yeah people. so <laughs> they have this whole underground mm, structure that has a couple of interesting properties one is that the specific frequency of 111 hertz or 110 hertz depending 110 hertz has a really weird resonant um ability in this space so when they play the frequency of 110 hertz or they hit drums that uh, have harmonic you know resonance with that particular frequency it basically gives people a spiritual out-of-body experience it literally takes these left brain scientists who are doing these experiments and gives them what these scientists would only describe as a spiritual like religious experience so they call it the holy frequency so i'm going to be in malta looking into this holy frequency in this beautiful, um, really interesting underground cave system. And the other cool thing is that these caves are designed with acoustics in mind. And there's this place in the center of the, uh, the uh, underground cave complex called the, can't remember what the, uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So this basically, it's a point where you stand and speak and the design of the architecture can carry your voice perfectly throughout the entire complex as if it was mic'd on a PA system. So yeah, it's only like 5,000 years old or something. So how the heck did they know that? And so I will have lots more information on that when I uh, come on in some future episodes. Maybe we'll talk about that. Maybe we'll save it for another time, but lots more cool stuff to come your way, uh, everybody. So as always, thank you for listening. And Bill, thank you so much for your insights. I love how you describe consciousness and spirituality and sometimes these weird subjects that are hard to explain in the human english language so i always appreciate hearing your uh, your insights on these things hey, thanks thank for that. you i appreciate yeah. that chris and thank you all for listening this this is as you all know such an incredible opportunity to just sit here and chat together and um and and learn and spin ideas and butt heads against things that don't make any sense and yep. try to unpack them and and we want to do a lot more of that. Uh, you kind of alluded to it, but that includes guests. We've got some interesting guests, ideas where we want to speak with them. So as we enter season two with this unfanfare <laughs> of an <laughs> announcement, um, hopefully you've gained something from this process that'll intrigue you and, and make you want to start your own journey uh, toward the possibilities that are in sound healing for you. Whether you do that with a facilitator or on your own or using YouTube videos, just, just do it because it's such a beautiful place to be, you know, and if you do it with other people, like do that because that's yeah. even really more cool to interact with the energy. hundred percent. So thanks Bill. And thanks everyone for watching, listening, or however you're consuming our uh, episodes, we appreciate you. And, you know, if you have uh, ideas for things that you want us to cover, or if you want to be a guest, please let us know. Sure. We'd be, Happy to consider that. So thanks Our again. Our contact stuff all in the show notes. Yep. Find it there. And uh, but we look forward to hearing from you. Absolutely. Be well, everyone. 
Aho. Aho.